Well, hey there guys, it's Corinna and I am in my CSA coach's kitchen today out in Slovenia. This is Katie Jardin. Hey everyone. Um, and we are here to announce a very special 14 day lunchbox challenge that I'm starting, you're doing it with me. Yes. And we're hoping <laughs> as many people out there as possible will join us for the next 14 days. I feel like I really stink at making my kids lunch um, in the morning for school. I pack a lunch, we hardly ever buy because I just don't like the food at the school. Um, and so I just want to share a story because this is my like day. Every morning I get up at 7 o'clock, I try to make lunch, and this morning I go and I, I see there are no lunch boxes ready for me to pack. They're still in my kid's backpack. Has that ever happened to you? And of course I open it up and it's disgusting inside, like everything falls out, there's dressing. And most importantly though, the ice pack is not in the freezer where it's supposed to be. So I could not pack anything cold for them today because there were no ice packs. This happens a lot. And all of a sudden, my options for preparing meals were cut in half. And I felt that same frustration every morning when I stare at the cabinets and all I can think of is sandwich, chips, and an apple. And I just don't know what else to make. And my kids hate sandwiches, so there I can't do that. Anyway, I don't know if you guys get frustrated with making lunch, but I'm sick of it. And so I just decided I want to try and get better at this. So we came up with this idea, Katie and I, yep. to do something called the 14-day lunchbox challenge. This is our own idea. No program we're following. It's totally free. And we just want to encourage you, if you struggle with making lunches for your kids, or maybe for yourself, to try and do this with us for 14 days to commit to making a better lunch for your kids at school. And along the way, we're going to be sharing some insights and tips and we're hopefully going to learn from you guys. So I want to share with you real quick how you can join this challenge with us. You can download, I thought to myself, what's the most helpful thing that I need in order to be successful at this? And I wanted a list of the different kinds of things that I could choose from to put in their lunch. So we went on Pinterest, we found a bunch of ideas, we put them together into different categories and I printed it out and I'm gonna put it on my fridge and I'm gonna be able to look at this every day and hopefully my brain will unlock. I won't just think sandwich, chips, and an apple. Yeah, and your kid's brain will unlock too. Yes, yes. because they're going to make the lunch with yes. me. <laughs> that is going to happen so that I can teach my kids how to do this. I don't wanna just continue this pattern of always waking up and doing their own lunch. They're 10, they're seven. They can make yeah. lots of their own lunch. Life skills. Right, at some point you need to teach this to your kids. So they're going to learn along with us for the next 14 days as we teach kind of some healthy tips. And the goal is that this will be on the fridge, they'll be able to see it, and maybe in a month I'll be able to trust them enough to kind of know how to use this. Pick, pick from each category. Yeah. So um, if you guys want to get your hands on this guy right here so that you can do the 14 day challenge with us, you can go to sharedlegacyfarms.com forward slash lunchbox. Now make sure you put the HTTP colon slash slash www in front of that or it might not work, okay? It's just kind of a weird glitch in my website right now. Um, but this is gonna, that's gonna get you this after you give us your email address. And then it's gonna give you a, an email every day for 14 days with a tip or a strategy. It's gonna be short or a giveaway. We're gonna give away some things to help you get better at this. So um, really excited about that. We have a prize too, but we'll talk about it at the, at the end. First, we just wanted to start out with kind of the first thing that we feel like we needed to get straight here was what what are the kinds of things that should be in your box? Like what are the categories, the formula, I guess, for yeah. a lunchbox? And this is our dietitian. So I figured you would know how to answer this question. So she's gonna do a little training here. This is kind of our first piece of content on the topic. Yeah. What can you teach me about the formula for a lunchbox? So we came up with basically we looked at the food groups and like what really needs to go into a lunch. And I will tell you guys that we decided early on that we were not like we're not being sugarcoating this. Like we are saying no to some items and we are saying yes to others. We are saying no to chocolate milk along with a few other things. I just cannot say that those are okay yeah. for a kid's lunch. Yeah, and don't um, think that we're judging you because we're we not, know that some of you just aren't going to give that up and that's fine. But like at some point we just have to. We have to say this right? is, we're trying to make better this is changes. What we think is the bar, and so these are our standards. And obviously, we've talked about this before too. Is this is not an overnight change. This is not mm -hmm. going to be 100% changed in two weeks. Yeah. 
Um, but we really hope to not only give you some tools and some ideas, but really some education to really be motivated just to keep this going and to continue to make these changes and not to give up. So um, with that said, the first part of a good lunch is going to be some sort of protein. Um, so we look at like protein options when they talk about kids performing better in school when they eat breakfast. It's because they ate a breakfast with some protein. Mm. And so we really want to keep that going through lunch. Um, so we don't just want to have a bunch of empty carbs at lunchtime. We've got to have some protein. So we've got a lot on our list. Um, one of my favorite protein sources is chicken. I know we talked about chicken nuggets could be one. Um, but I also grab rotisserie chicken because for me that's a really that's better, super yeah. easy, convenient um, way to get some protein in. I just want to get it today. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to use it for uh, some meals this weekend. But yeah, slicing up some rotisserie chicken. You can also do things like cheese, which would also count as like some dairy, some Greek yogurt, some nut butter. So we've got a lot of great protein options on there. You can also do leftovers from dinner. Leftovers. Huge. Yes. Yeah. Huge. And that may sound crazy right now, like, oh, I can't imagine giving my kid leftovers for dinner. But we talk to a lot of members in our farm group, and that's what they do. And that yeah. could take a while to get used to. Um, but, you know, you don't give up. This is not an overnight change. Yeah. It would be weird for you to change your lunch routine. So just imagine for a child. Right. Um, so protein is really, I'm going to say, one of the most important components of a good lunch. You Can't know, my two, I have two boys, and they always tell me, I need meat. Yeah. Like, that's every time I make dinner, they're like, Mom, is there meat? And sometimes I'm like, no, buddy, it's kind of vegetarian today. And they're like, oh. So I don't know what yeah. it is. Is it is it always just one protein or does it go up as they get older? Um, so the portion size can increase um, as they get older. I mean, they say like for an adult, um, I'm going to say like the average size adult, it needs to be at least three or four ounces of protein at a meal, which looks like the size of a deck of cards. So depending on how old your child is, it's, yeah, I know, I can <gasps> eat more. Um, I didn't know that. So that's for, actually... I would say growing boys, yeah, that's it's going to be almost that. Okay. Um, so it just kind of depends on your activity level, your gender, um, but you do need to have some sort of protein in that lunch. All right, what's next? Protein, one thing. Got next it. is fruit and veggie. Um, mm -hmm. And first, you know, a lot of people think just fruit or veggie, and I'm saying fruit and, and veggie, veggie, and that is even a struggle for me. But if kids are supposed to be eating so many servings of veggies every day, I'm assuming they're not getting one at breakfast. If they mm -hmm. skip it at lunch, Maybe they get one for a snack and then maybe at dinner, that's like two or three servings. We need like five or six. We can't skip yeah. out on the veggie for lunch. So a big part of that is going to be weekend prep, I think. Um, just kind of like knowing what you have. Like I've got sliced peppers. I like to store my mason jars because they really keep fresh. They don't get yeah. soggy, um, you know, and this will be for lunches for a few days. Mm -hmm. So, and that could be a decision that your kids help you make on Sunday is what veggie do they want that week? I will even like thaw out, you know, I'll have frozen broccoli and that'll be our veggie for a few days. Mm -hmm. um, so it just kind of depends, but I also grab these cherry tomatoes that we got in our yeah. CSA box. So, so that's raw, kind of a good Raw, but also cooked. So raw or leftovers. Cooked. Yeah. If, you know, if there's a leftover that's got the veggie as part of the leftover, that's great. Yeah. Roasted veggies go, go in, in the lunchbox for me all the time. Yeah. So, um, and that again, you know, I, I have a toddler, I have a three year old and he's just kind of conditioned now to be okay with eating a cold roasted veggie. Um, so that might also take a little bit of conditioning, or we'll talk about equipment in a few days, but having a thermos or something yeah. that you can put something warm in might also be big. Yeah. So veggies, um, and then a fruit I think is really easy. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, obviously grapes, strawberries, yeah. fresh, could be frozen, yeah. um, but some sort of fruit. So yeah. fruit and veggie. And I think something too, if you, like just thinking portion size and I don't know, like the time that my kids have to eat lunch, doesn't feel like they have a lot of time. It doesn't. And so when I sometimes when I pack my lunch and it comes back, I'm thinking to myself, is it is it that they just couldn't get to it fast enough because they're chit chatting and trying to talk to their friends, yeah. you know? And they gotta, you know, eat this big piece of meat and a and a fruit and a vegetable and a dairy and like, oh my gosh. So I think sometimes the food comes back because maybe we made the portion a little right. too big. Too big. They don't um, have time. So something to think about. And with that said, maybe not, you know, just having smaller portions of a larger variety of things yeah. might also be a lot better so they yeah. can get those things in. So, um, And then next was grains, which I also feel like is kind of an easier one, but we want to try to do like healthier grains. I know some people think of this more of just like a source of starch, which is where the potato chips might come in sometimes. Yeah. Is potato um, chip a, a grain? No, I don't know. I mean, I don't... It's on her do not it's pack list. It's a potato. Yeah. Um, it's on my do not pack list because I feel like those things are just going to float into your kids' lives no matter what. I don't think it needs to be a part of their daily lunch. Yeah. Um, what about a veggie chip? 
Like veggie chips are okay, right? I would say they're okay, but I don't count them as a vegetable. Ooh, really? I don't okay. count them as a vegetable. All right. That is very misleading. That was totally off script. Didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it what, makes my heart hurt a little that those say veggies on them. I mean, I understand they have like powder maybe from vegetables in them. They're not as bad as potato chips, but I still don't think they're necessarily wow, like, okay. good for you. This blew my mind. All right. So, so like popcorn, popcorn, pretzels, and pretzels. Obviously, crackers. you can get like lower sodium. Yeah, I've got crackers there. Yeah. Um, you know, even doing like rice cakes. I know rice cakes are a big one in our house. Um, I've got also a tortilla because you know, even if you did like wraps, you know, whether yeah. it was with like turkey or cheese or something. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, grains are usually fairly easy. Um, so if you're making a sandwich, you pretty much cover it because you've right, got you're your bread. Right, you're using your bread. Yeah. Yep. Pasta yeah. salad was another good one that we yeah. heard. Yeah. Um, again, you could also get kind of out of, your, out of your comfort zone with this one. Right. And now we've got dairy. Uh, so dairy, you could be like cow's milk dairy, like regular yogurt. There's also a ton of alternatives out there if you can't have dairy, like almond milk yogurt, soy milk yogurt, all those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk about yogurt a lot over yeah. this challenge because I feel like that's an area that some people allow way too much sugar in and they might not even realize it. Um, so I've got plain yogurt here. Making your own like yogurt parfait or sweetening this yourself, I will tell you, you will never add as much sugar at home as they do when they process it and sweeten it for you in a package or in like a go-gurt. That's um, Yeah, it's crazy. So if you get plain, um, you can always add some frozen fruit to it. You can also just add a little bit of jelly and stir it in. Yeah, um, you know, you're never going to sweeten it that much yourself. You can obviously do regular milk. I saw these at the store the other day, and I kind of like this idea of just making these yourself, obviously. But, you know, little bites of cheese what with some it? trail mix. They probably can't see that. So oh, trail mix and Trail some mix with, like, cashews and dried cranberries and some cheese. Um, yeah. You know, obviously it's going to be cheaper when you can just kind of buy a block of cheese and do that yourself, string cheese. So right. some sort of dairy. And then we also have this like optional, um, optional section of like a dip or something. And I mean, if you if your kids like dip or you want to try to yeah. get some other stuff in there, that'd be things like salsa or guacamole, um, cottage cheese. If you get your kids to eat cottage cheese and fruit, I think that's like such a good little like protein healthy yeah. snack. Or if you um, have a baked potato butter. bar, I was just thinking, yeah. I'm gonna try a baked potato bar like yeah. for lunch, and they can just dip it. Yeah. Um, so lots of different dips. Right. Um, Dip initially wasn't even on her list when we were coming up with formula, and then I called her because I'm like, I was doing research on Pinterest, trying to figure out how to design this guy, um, and I'm like, there's a lot of people saying dips. Are you sure? And she's like, like sure. She's like, okay, optional. There's got to be healthy things in the dip section. So yeah, don't just do like ranch dressing dips yeah. all the time. Yeah. That's, you know, not, that's sugar. I mean, it's I mean, like, I, that's what we do too, but. It's like you just gotta expand your palate. I think that's like what's gonna be my biggest challenge is just like getting out of our comfort zone and trying some other things and just yeah. knowing that some days this food is not gonna get eaten. Like it, there's gonna be meltdowns and like right. there's gonna be arguments and I'm just sticking to it and I'm hoping to get a larger variety of stuff in my lunch boxes. Yeah. So. One of our members told me that when her kids come home with lunch still uneaten, like large portions of it, that she puts it on their on the dinner table and they have to eat it for dinner and I was like yes yes I don't know if I have the guts to do that but like it worked oh you know after like yeah. two times they don't do that anymore so you know a little bit of tough love me I said maybe she can like come to like our houses for like a week and yeah. just be like the nanny yeah. like that nanny show where yeah. like they're like this is what's happening with the lunches yeah. but she does this they they pack their own they pack their they own they have now. like yep. they are empowered enough to kind right. of pick from the categories and they know she also has groups they choose a protein and they choose a veggie, they choose a fruit, so um, right. kind of having those standards when your kids are helping you, I think, right. will be really important. This is so important to do right now um, because you, this is when you're training your kid's brain, right? I mean, yeah. we, we think about how we're, we're always, as parents, we're guiding our kids, we're teaching them the values and things that they need to succeed as adults, and sometimes I think we forget that we're supposed to teach them how to eat. Because if we don't teach them how to eat well, there's going to be huge repercussions when they're adults with their health, with their... Um, just with their weight and yeah. their, their self-esteem as a result like I want to be able to give them the best possible fuel like to be able to succeed in life and I just feel like this is a really valuable skill set to, to play around with I don't think I don't feel like I'm horrible at it but I don't think that I've been super intentional with my second one especially my second child so I'm really excited to kind of just get back I'm on the bandwagon too. and try this out 
Yeah. Um, all right, I so think, those yeah. are the five categories. Yeah, uh, those protein, are the five categories. Protein. protein, fruit and a vegetable, grain and a dairy, and then an optional dip. And we'll also be talking about treats at some point over the challenge. Oh, treats. And what that means to us. And if yeah. you have to have one. If so you have to have one. Don't have to have one. <laughs> yeah, and drinks. You know, I think and when, drinks. when you were talking about um, dairy, like my kids, I don't even send a drink with them. I'm like, go to the water fountain. Um, and so they tell me that at, you know, I feel like a bad mom now because I'm finding out that people are bringing water bottles and Capri Suns and whatever, but, um, but now I'm thinking maybe I should just send them with, you know, some money in the bank at the, at the school and say, every day get a milk. You know, yeah. like that's just what I expect to do. A white, a white milk. Yeah, so this is, milk. yeah, we're doing plain milk and we are doing water. Yeah. And unfortunately, we're not doing a lot of the other nonsense. So. Yeah. Or fortunately, because that's really just... Again, changing or training your kids' right. taste buds. I think that even adults get in a rut. Like once you start to eat sugar or fast food for on a regular yeah. basis, you just you start to crave that stuff. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, that's what happens to our kids, right. and that is just increasing the rate at which all these chronic diseases are diagnosed. So, right. you yeah. know, the reason why my kids, my second son, likes soda is is because I like soda and. At some point after Jed was like three, I just started bringing it back into the house and sneaking it in on the side every now and then. And then I was like, oh, it's okay to have it here and there. And then my son saw me drinking it. And then I'm like, sure, you can have some because I'm drinking it and I feel bad. You can have a little bit. So now he knows soda and he likes soda. So I think sometimes I feel guilty because part of what I'm, part of the issue with my kids is probably because I secretly want to have it in my house. I want the bugles in my house and I want the ruffles. And <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, I, 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 I just hard. feel like if you really look deep inside of you as a parent, you probably like having some of that stuff available yeah, for you to snatch sure. off. And so this is tough to be like, okay, I'm going to try for 14 days to not include that. It's going to be a little tough for you too because... Tough for everyone. Yeah, you may enjoy it as well. And your husband. Maybe, maybe you just pick a few things well. to start with too to change. Yeah. I will tell yeah. you, changing taste buds is... It's hard, yep. and it's harder to go back once you yep. like sweet things or salty things. It's a lot, yep. a lot harder to go back. I will. Sorry, no quick story. Yeah. So this plain yogurt, this plain yogurt was my go-to for a long time with my toddler. He had plain yogurt every single morning, loved it. And then one weekend, he went to grandma's for the weekend, and she, he had hit her um, strawberry, her pink yogurt, just one time. Oh, grandma. One time, grandma. And he came home, and that next day, he wanted Grandma's yogurt and only her pink yogurt. And it took me weeks Aww. of mixing plain yogurt with a sweetened yogurt and use more and more plain over time to change his taste buds to get him to re-like the plain. So mm. um, it can happen very fast, and it can take a lot of work, but those to change grandmas. those taste buds. I know. I'm like, you might as well just give him a cookie. Oh, I I love, I'd rather I just have a cookie. It. Yeah. Wow. Well. <sighs> Nothing against grandmas. We love you. I love you. What happens at grandma stays at grandma's. That's what I, I hear a lot. Right, yeah. yeah. So let's talk to you about how this challenge works. If you're intrigued and you want to try eating, making healthy lunches for your kids or teaching them how to make healthy lunches for the next 14 days, um, we begin next Monday. What is that? The 17th? Yes, the 17th. Um, we start this coming, yeah, next Monday. We're going to run for two weeks. So that's 10 school days. And then there's going to be two weekends, obviously, kind of in there as well. Hence, 14 days. And here's how it works. We want you to participate in the challenge by, number one, downloading this freebie, which you can get at www.sharelegacyfarms.com forward slash lunchbox. This is going to give you the menu um, ideas for each of these categories we just went through so that you have something to work with. You can look at this list and be like, oh, jerky, hard-boiled egg, BLT sandwich, um, pumpkin seeds, rotisserie chicken. You'll just kind of see a list to get your brain going and give you some options to unlock you and get you out of that rut. Um, but you're also going to get subscribed to a 14-day email drip campaign. So it's basically going to give you an email every day for 14 days with a very quick strategy and a challenge for each day to try and just motivate you and keep you on the bandwagon, all right? So start out by doing that. That will automatically start once you download this and give us your email and get this freebie. And then starting Monday when you're starting to make lunches, we want to challenge you to actually post a picture of your lunchbox after you've finished making the food and hashtag it SL Farms Lunchbox so that we can find it and see it. And you can um, also tag us at Shared Legacy Farms on Facebook. Mm -hmm. If you're on Instagram, you can do it at SL Farms, the number two, and that way we'll be able to see it more easily. At the end of the two weeks, we actually have a prize for people who submit at least one photo. We're going to throw all of your names into a hat. We're going to pick one person's name, 
and that person is going to win this planet box lunch box which is sort of like a bento box if you don't know what that is we'll be teaching you about that in a couple days um, but this is a, like a stainless steel lunch box it's gorgeous and it has little compartments in it that allow you to portion things out it's really really awesome and even comes with some little cups so this is the prize that you can be going for all you have to do is enter one time with that hashtag um, every time you enter, you get another name in the hat up to 14 times, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And so you increase your odds every time you post a picture. And it doesn't have to be a picture of your lunch. It could be like your kids helping you make the lunch. Yes. Love that. It could be you um, sharing how frustrated you are. Uh, it could be a picture of the lunch that came back and wasn't eaten. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, seriously, we want this to be like a document. Uh, documenting your journey over the next 14 days, and it's not going to be all rainbows and right. unicorns. Right, not, not get so ready, okay? But this is, I think, the best way to just for a short period of time practice this skill. And we're hoping, I'm hoping, that I can kind of get better at like one or two things. I'm not expecting to be an ace at this, but I'm really hoping to teach my kids how to do this better. That's what I'm most excited about. So yeah. if you have kids that are old enough to actually learn this with you, I think this would be a fantastic. Thing to do together we're gonna pack our lunches at night instead of in the morning and we're gonna see if that relieves some of my morning stress so thanks for joining us download this get this freebie at www.sharedlegacyfarms.com forward slash lunchbox and it will start your 14 day lunchbox challenge Yay! today we can't wait to check in with you tomorrow with our next tip and is there anything else you want to say? No, that's all. I'm excited. Don't I'm excited. drink chocolate milk. No chocolate milk. Give it up now. All right. We'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye.